fantasy is a reality, as he writes on his website. He's a composer, guitarist, improviser, graphic artist, author, and artistic researcher. As a composer, his body includes dozens of works for solo guitar, solo piano works, over 50 percussion works, microtonal guitar works, as well as music for the stage, such as theater music, ballet dance music, and vocal works. He also has several orchestral works and five chamber operas. His music has been played at international centers, including Bruckner House Linz, Glinka Hall St. Petersburg, Harper Hall Reykjavik, or Musikgebau Amsterdam. He's currently writing the opera Cerro Rico for the New York Opera Society. He has published for Doblinger Verlag, Bergmann Edition, Verlag Neue Musik, Da Vinci Edition, Mackinger Verlag, and Joachim Treckel. He's an immensely active, immensely multidisciplinary, and immensely impressive musician with a truly unbelievable breadth of skill, knowledge, and experience. He shared with me many videos that feature his work, of which I shall give a small sample, inviting you to explore deeply Agustin Castilla Avila's works further via his website. The following brief excerpt is from an exhibition at the Anderson Center, Red Wing, Minnesota. His artistic research composition for Major Trois for three percussionists on string trio was performed by ensemble Neo Percussion. <laughs> Blowing the Wind by a never ending artist, encompassing Isabella Heigl painting and Agustin Castilla Avila electric guitars. It is the epilogue of the project, quote, with Dylan on the road, unquote. Agustin Castilla Avila is currently visiting professor for artistic research. Please subscribe to Agustin Castilla Avila's YouTube channel, link down below. I spoke with Agustin on the 16th of February, 2023. Let's jump right into the interview without any further ado. Welcome to Being in Practice-Based Research. The first question is, what inspires you in your practice and how do you work with that in your practice-based research? Yeah, I think for that question, it's important to uh, for me to say, I, I am an artist mainly. And I've been doing artistic research in the last maybe six, six years or so. I create something. Sometimes this is uh, intuitive. And right after that, I can understand the, the concept. And sometimes it's been really a long time uh, between the, create, the creation and the, the research. What inspires me so as an artist, what I, what I try to do, it comes naturally. So when you incorporate also artistic research, so your explorations, you start doc documenting, analyzing uh, your, your processes, you get new questions because I don't understand creation myself. I, I'm speaking as an artist now. I don't understand creation without exploration. For me, of course, I have to explore to uh, sometimes I don't even know what I'm exploring or where I'm exploring at the beginning. It happened in my life until, you know, you need some time. And uh, so I guess that when you are aware of some methods, some, some um, structure in the artistic research, you can uh, you can 
do your explorations, your introspection in a different way. And then of course, it has happened to me that some, some of my uh, classifications or some of my patterns in one field of artistic research, I move them to another one. One of my uh, artistic uh, research projects is called Instrumental Techniques Interchange. And uh, actually, I investigate the, the, the application of uh, other instrumental techniques to uh, uh, instruments which are not historically intended for. So I can import, uh, I don't know, in the case of uh, well, two different instruments, I can import techniques from another instrument. So if I'm a guitar player, I apply other techniques or being me a guitarist, I can apply my instrumental techniques on other instruments, uh, which are not mine. And sometimes I used the two people, two inst instrumentalists, applying uh, uh, both techniques in one instrument, which I call symbiotic processes or even mixing processes. So I have this importing, exporting, and mixing. So um, I had a big question while uh, developing this uh, artistic research, because uh, for me, this is transdisciplinarity in the discipline, in, in the music discipline, because uh, techniques, I mean, even that everything is the, is the discipline of music, but the techniques are so different. I mean, one pianist can do not so much on a, on a violin, for example, or on a guitar. And the opposite. So it's really this discipline of music is very uh, well divided. So for me, I don't know. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I never intended to make kind of uh, a terminology, a fixed terminology. But I remember I threw this uh, question, and until today, I never. Uh, yeah, I don't have an answer myself, and I never got an answer that I could um, consider uh, proper. Uh, so this is uh, this is one of the one of uh, one of the things. So importing, you know, these patterns importing to another discipline that really opened open a, a big door. So now you're more aware when your mind is also you have this perspective of artistic research, although it's not my priority. I hope I continue being an artist, and I really enjoy it uh, this way but you will have this uh, plus in your in your mind to explore in in different in a different way so the more all this these experiences at the end they make you as an artist and uh, and also as an artistic um researcher will will provide you uh, new new probably yeah new ideas continuously but it's wonderful to be so versatile. I am deeply impressed. Uh -huh. It's really fantastic because you can make connections that other people cannot make. And you see with a larger horizon, which is absolutely amazing as a musician, composer, artistic mm -hmm. researcher, teacher, guitarist, I mean, that, or, um, you know, artist in all of those disciplines, it seems like a big advantage. And so uh -huh. I... I wish you all the yeah. best in this phase that comes next. Uh, so um, the next question is actually in this direction, um, namely, what does it mean to be a practitioner researcher in any way and sense you want in your own body and in your own experience and in your own world? Yeah, it's uh, awareness. Uh, I mean, it's uh, when you practice uh, research, artistic research it's uh i mean not that you're trying uh, in my case i'm not really trying to connect with certain theories that i hear and uh you know the ego of 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 me as an artist also like pushes me to do it your own way in many cases because you can do it uh, you can do your own patterns so uh, that um, they might be helpful for other people, for students, for other colleagues, uh, wh whatever. 
And uh, so that is the case of uh, this instrumental techniques interchange. Of course, in history, in the last uh, years, I mean, I, I've been, you, need, you also need to understand, this is part of the artistic research. You need to understand the discourse, in my opinion. So you understand kind of, okay, what is my role in this, in this line? What can I do different? What can I, where are my influences? Maybe if there are historic influences in, in, my, in my work. And so actually things like this happened uh, before, like the piece uh, Güero by Helmut Lachemann is for piano, but his vision was completely different. And also by Arthur Campella, uh, he wrote for a guitar player on a viola, his vision was completely different. And there are a few examples of composers using this, even I'm really fascinated about Claude Debussy, who, um, was uh, obsessed with the guitar, even though, uh, I mean, a little bit, I don't know how much, of course, uh, we, we, we never talked. <laughs> and, um, but it's, I find very interesting when he wrote, I mean, in his piano music, quasi guitarra, and also in his uh, Iberia suite, uh, quasi guitarra, again, for the string section. So what, did that mean? I mean, for me, this is like the modern uh, idea of music. It's like he, he probably didn't understand what it was about to come. And so these other examples, uh, so they, of course, the, the most used term is extended techniques, extended techniques that you actually import from other instruments. So extended, is that correct? I mean, it's of, of course accepted. I'm not here to say it is wrong or anything like this. And then I also see some examples or some uh, explanations like, like, okay, I treat the piano, I use in guero, I treat the piano like, like a sonorous object, which is of course valid. Or sometimes, you know, different explan um, uh, explanations of, of, of the concept. So I just, I, for me, that was for myself as an artist, that was not valid. So I had to, to create a concept very uh, clear, which didn't exist before in the terminology, which is instrumental techniques interchange, classification, tac, tac, tac. And I try, I'm very inspired by cooking. <laughs> I, as I, I, I see actually that when I uh, do my artistic research, it's kind of uh, using my cooking processes uh, in, in, in my work because I try to use good ingredients and then to cook them in the most simple possible way. I mean, there are many ways of cooking. I'm not a chef, of course, just uh, um, um, amateur. Uh, amateur. And, um, and uh, but I can see that as a person, a lot of the, these processes, they influence me in, in my professional life. So that was uh, my idea. And that is also in another, in another fields like, like silence. I also try to, to explain to uh, unbeaten, to just to uh, offer my, my my research, my vision, my my opinion, and uh, this instrumental techniques interchange. I in the methods I was using, I I had uh, like thirty interviews with musicians all over the world, very different musicians, composers, uh, some of them very uh, top professionals, and it seemed to me they were very comfortable using the term. Uh, instrumental techniques interchange, but I don't know if that's going to be uh, used. I saw some of the consequences as uh, some of the projects, some of these people's involved with my work, how they continue with this uh, with this concept and using this instrumental techniques interchange uh, term. And uh, I think it's a uh, very valid. It's a it's a wonderful. Um, concept instrumental techniques interchange and it's very simple to understand and I think it's a really beautiful term I think it's actually very helpful to name things in a way that is um, easily usable 
and immediately opens up what is this and as you say it's historically relevant it's relevant in um, for composers it's relevant for musicians to inspire the imagination what is a publication that you could recommend to the artistic research communities <laughs> safe promotion encouraged <laughs> okay yeah then i mean i have um um i have uh, still, uh, still leben mit Stille, still life with silence, which is, I mean, this is a, like a catalog with Mackinger Verlag. So these are my 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 um, graphic works, uh, but here is only eighteen at the moment. I have 40, 40 works, and I I've been having exhibitions already. I mean, I'm working. It's very easy to get work for me as an artist, as a graphic artist. I had exhibitions between Japan and Mexico, like I think maybe 12 countries. I need to, to, to see this again. And uh, so, yeah, you might, you might be interested, uh, especially because of the, uh, in my opinion, uh, the value, uh, how we value silence is exactly how we used to value music historically. We now have too much music everywhere. We have the devices to hear music the whole day everywhere. So that's why what we think it's silence, because I don't believe that silence per se exists anywhere in the universe, but you know, we, we mean quietness, not silence actually. We, we, we work with our, our perception so in this, uh, so this is this interchange of, of values and how me as an artist using the graphics of Western music, how I can be consequent to create something. And at the same time, because it's graphic, how you can create uh, forms that were created historically in the visual arts, like portraits. Actually, most of the things you see here are portraits, uh, landscapes, and sometimes also like like objects, kind of objects related to to, to silence. And um, so here also there is one term called polysiopy. I mean, it's also in in a book by by the musicologist uh, musicologist Wolfgang Grazza. I mean, I'm not just the one who used it. So this polysiopy means many silences at the same time, because one of these works uh, refers to my question is, okay, I can either classify this as polysiopy of the inner voice, because it's a very important thing for me, especially now, now in, in, in the time we, we are living with artificial intelligence. And some people want to make us believe that this artificial intelligence will read uh, our inner voice. So this uh, that's why I'm very active with this, like a little bit of artistic activism like defending your individuality kind of okay uh, don't i don't believe i don't know uh, i don't know if it's if it ever happened of course but i don't i don't i will i think i will never believe that and yeah and um if i may uh, because of the valparaiso also this uh, never ending artist so uh, this uh, publication here is academic, so I speak about this uh, classification is in three languages. This classification in the transdisciplinarity. Um, if I may extend, uh, you can see, I mean, some people consider me. Please, please. I'm very <laughs> grateful for all these recommendations. Um, a lot of people consider me a specialist in silence. I also created the first existing silent opera in 2013. The rest is silence. Uh, but even though I talk, <laughs> I love to talk. So I'm, I'm not silent uh, so much. What I did here, I mean, I can, maybe I can find some pictures of, uh, so it's also some of the works. Um, this also from Valparaiso. Um, so it should be, it should be so this is California Valparaiso so this is the work uh, from Valparaiso University from our performance 
Nice. So, uh, what I did here with my colleague, with the painter, Austrian painter, Isabella Heigel, so we created, uh, so this interchange, so we were uh, using this exporting, importing and mixing and what we could create. But then, uh, so when you kind of deliberately, uh, you practice this artistic research and you take uh, these ideas to a new field, uh, what we found. So um, we created uh, actually what we call hybrid, hybrid platform. So we created an object where you could practice two disciplines at the same time. So this, this was very important for us. And also, I mean, we have prototypes. I mean, there, there is a lot, a lot to do for me as an artist whenever I, I really have uh, enough time for this kind of project. So this, this, uh, there, there are more things uh, coming out of this. And I don't know if these new ideas can be also valid in another field. So it's kind of the more you practice, the more resources uh, and structures and ideas you have. So you can use this in different in different fields, and at the moment um, uh, it's with creation. It's very hectic. I don't have too much time uh, uh, to uh, for theory, unfortunately, for uh, taking a look at uh, colleagues, at the work of colleagues, and at the moment is so busy with uh, production that I think for me is very important to spend uh, to 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 spend as much time as possible to uh, to for creation 